Father God, we confess our love for you. We confess our need for you. Mm. We confess our hope in you. Mm. Lord, your word says that if we humble ourselves and submit ourselves to you, that we can resist the enemy, we can resist the world, we can resist temptation, and that you don't give us anything beyond what we can handle. So, Lord God, we just pray that no matter where these men and women are in their journey, that you would help them grow, help them be light that shines bright to a world that so needs love and forgiveness and peace and joy. Father God, use us today and every day as we walk out our faith day by day. In Jesus' name. All right. So um, I, I've drawn a little picture here that I actually got from uh, Jeff Kemp. I want to share that with you here in just a minute, guys, because what Joe talked about today, Are You Being Transformed, ties really directly with a word that Jeff gave me a couple of weeks ago as part of a, um, a national men's meeting. And I want to show that here in a second. But before I, before I reveal this, um, Joe, I was struck by your comment. You said it a couple of times. The Christian life is not hard. It's impossible. And then your caveat was that without the Holy Spirit. I mean, and that's 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 so true. And, and yet we make it complicated. We make it hard. We make it difficult. Uh, we operate in our own power, our own strength. You know, our desire to do right, be good uh, is pretty strong. And yet our follow through can be can be pretty challenging and, 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 and without the Holy spirit, it is impossible. So I'm, I'm curious, anybody have a reaction to that statement and that, uh, that insight? I think it's a great insight, Joe, but anybody want to respond to just the Christian life is not hard. It is impossible without the Holy spirit. Anybody want to respond to that? And then I'll show you this little diagram here. Rod, I think the more I learn the more obvious that becomes because he doesn't overwhelm me with seeing the big picture all the time. But what he does show me is a little bit each day. And I realize how much I have to depend on him to take the next step. Mm. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard to explain, but I think the closer I get to him, the more I see that is left to do. And I don't have the ability to do it. And I hope that makes sense. It sounds like I'm talking gibberish to me, but, but, but really the, the, it seems like almost every day there's something that he points out that I never thought about before. Mm. And it's all out of my reach. Mm. It's good. That's exactly what we're talking about, Byron. Anybody else want to, Share an insight to that observation that Joe made this morning. Christian life is not hard, it's impossible. I think of uh, John 15 and uh, verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches, the one who remains in me, and I and him bear much fruit, for apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm. And uh, and that's, that's the Christian walk, you know, is... You have to be the uh, the branch and let him be the vine because apart from him, well, we can't do anything. Isn't the Greek Good word? Thank you for that. Yeah, isn't the Greek there, Bob? Uh, can't do anything. We can't do anything. I mean, it's pretty clear. I mean, we can do nothing. Zippo. Yeah, it says nothing. <laughs> <laughs> We can do nothing that would please him. We can do nothing that would uh, have eternal consequence. We can do all Amen. kinds of stuff that would be conformed to the world, but we can't do anything that would bring glory to him or bring life to others around us apart from him. And we might want to think we can, but that's where we get in trouble, I think, is that we, make our, we want to make ourselves little gods and think, I got this, you know? No. Nope. You don't got this. He's got this, and he wants to use us. What a what an honor! What a privilege! And what a great insight! Thank you for that, hey Joe. I've got a I've got a T-shirt. Some of you have seen me wear this before, but it says Jesus, 
plus nothing equals everything. Mm. And, uh, you know, that's a great mathematical equation uh, when you think about what, what that looks like. I bring nothing. Jesus brings everything. So, And how much sense does this make to the, to the natural carnal mind? This makes no sense. Right? It can only be revealed to us by his spirit. That's good. Anybody else on that? I'm just thinking about that that chart that Joe showed at the end about exploring Christ, growing in Christ, close to Christ, Christ centered. That's a great illustration of the continuous journey we're on, right? Uh, as we go closer to Christ, our desire for more of Him only increases, and we want to explore Him even more. So that, and we're on different aspects of that journey and different aspects of our walk with him all simultaneously it's all part of the dynamic uh, that makes this walk impossible to live by without him so joe your the illustration george just referred to is what spurred on in my mind what uh, what jeff kemp showed me and let me let me try to put this on the screen so you guys can see it <laughs> the bottom in the bottom corner there is as is that's that's where I'm at and you'll notice this line to where I'm going to be is not a straight line <laughs> it's got lots of different bends and circles and but you'll notice that one of the first thing that happens that God does when he comes in our life is he uh we receive him as savior and lord he he regenerizes us he 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 makes it happen uh, so, so we invite him to come in as we receive him. And that's, that's who we're becoming in Christ. And then Jeff drew this other little circle. That's where he calls the huddle. The huddle is a small group of people that you gather with. that gives you energy and strength and encouragement and prayer. And then, and then, you know, the combination of what God has done in our life and, and what he's doing in the midst of these people that are investing in us. You'll notice there's still other challenges and adventures, but what we're becoming is, is, is being transformed. That's where we're moving. We're moving that direction. And, and it's, it really parallels exactly what Joe has given us in the handout here, exploring Christ, growing in Christ, close to Christ, and becoming Christ-centered. This, this is where God wants us to become, but it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible journey, and it's a journey we could never navigate by ourselves that we should, could never do in our own strength, that, you know, we need the Holy Spirit, we need the input of people, we obviously need the, 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 the re-energizing work that Christ does in our life, and when those come together, that's, that's who we're becoming, and that's who we're, we're living for, and Jeff, two weeks ago, shared this little picture with me, and I just thought, you know, how insightful and how simple this is, and we, and, and Joe, you mentioned it, we make this so complicated, and we get, we get all, kind of crazy, but God's saying, hey, just trust me, just believe me, walk with me. And guess what? You do it day by day. You do it day by day. Uh, you just faithfully walk in the, in the next step and the next step, and you begin to grow in Christ's likeness as you, as, you, as you do these very things you talked about. So, Joe, thank you. That's very, very insightful. Anybody else got an observation? Rod, uh, you ought to take that picture that you just showed us. Yes. Put it on the front of a T-shirt and sell them at TGIW. <laughs> now, there's an idea. Yeah. That would be great. I mean, this is what it is all about, right? That would be a great conversation started. Yeah. That's what we're becoming right there, guys. So I have a question for the guys. So uh, anybody consider yourself uh, um, proficient? At living day by day, mm. especially at living in the moment? Mm. And if so, what kind of pointers might you have for us? How do you live in the moment? How do you live day by day? I was in church uh, yesterday, and uh, we're in praise and worship. All of a sudden, I felt my mind drift. I go, nope, I'm not going to drift. I, I'm not going to drift. I'm going to stay focused on what I'm doing here. Uh, it, it obviously is a habit. It's obviously something that can be developed over time. And I want to hear somebody that's further down the road than I am on this journey of living in the moment. 
living day by day. Anybody got it? So it's a chronic problem faced by every single man on this call. Ron, do you struggle with this? Oh, Joe, I struggle big time with it. And uh, I'm like you. I'm always thinking ahead, always thinking ahead. So, wow. I'm, I'm all ears. I'm all ears, too, guys. And, and uh, Joe, thank you for. Yeah. Hey, Rod, I have a thought. Yes, go for it. Okay. So, last year when I'm in the Grand Canyon and I'm tired and I'm beat up and worn out, and I've got four miles to go and I've got an elevation of 4,000 4, feet to ascend. One of the lessons I learned was don't look up. It's too intimidating. I can't, I can't, I can see the first where the first switchback makes a left turn, but after that, I cannot see the trail for the next four miles up to the top. I can't see it at all. All I can see is it's 4,000 feet out of here in four miles, one step at a time. Mm. When I make it to the switchback, I make a left turn and go to the next one. Don't look up, look ahead. One step at a time. Okay. If you look up to the top, because this happened, one guy, he was young, he was tired, his guide said, don't look up. And he looked up. And the next thing you know, he's waiting a day for a mule to come down and haul him out. He couldn't get out. Mm. Or it was a helicopter. One step at a time. That's all you can do. Mm. I, I don't know if that makes sense to you or if it fits what we're describing here, but that's one of the things that I learned. Kind of reminds me of that verse where it says, uh, his word is a, a light onto our path and a lamp onto our feet. And that gives me that same picture, if I'm hearing you correctly, that we're just to keep our eyes on what's right there in front of us. It doesn't say he's going to light up that whole journey that Rod just, you know, showed us. It just says he'll light our, you know, be a lamp onto our feet, a light onto our path, as I recall. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, and it, it forces you. To stay in the moment is what it does. I mean, that's where I was at. It forces you to stay in the moment and, and not get too far ahead because at that point I was too tired to think of what was really far ahead. Thank you for sharing that, Stephen. Brother, I agree with you on that, uh, that the, in Psalms 119 about the lamp being the light and, and uh to our path. I was thinking of Matthew 4, 4, where Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And you said that verse in uh, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night in order to be careful to do according to all that is written in it, but then you'll make your way prosperous and then you'll have success. And I find that the word gets my eyes on Jesus, gets my eyes off of myself and onto him. And it always helps me to praise him and to examine me. And uh, it's, it's just a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. Mm. So you've asked a great question. Anybody else got uh, any, any insight on how to live day by day? Mike Bailey, go for it. Good morning, Joe. Good to see hey, you. Mike. Again. Yeah, Mike, good to see you. And, <laughs> and thank you so much for letting me see your face. That is just so helpful. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I've been there. I know that. I still go there. But if we go back to Ecclesiastes 3 and 3 and 4, there is a time for everything a time two and a time four and being in the moment when i when i teach people about live communication it's so important that you are able to get to this heightened awareness where you're aware of everything that's going on around you i liken it into driving a vehicle at 120 miles an hour plus you can't think of anything else you're trying to keep safe because everything's happening so fast. But when you can be in that moment, then you can see the wonders of God. When I lead the Lenexa, the Overland Park Lenexa group tomorrow morning, I always ask them, what God sightings have you had this week? And there's almost complete silence. And I look out the window 
and there's beautiful grass growing. The trees are waving or it's pouring with rain. Whatever it is to look at what's around you in that moment. Yes, you've got to prepare. You've had to prepare for today. And you said it took you many hours. I know what that's like. I'm speaking tomorrow. But thank goodness, someone like Greg Griffin, thank you, Greg. And I asked you this many, many months ago, can I use one of your talks? And you very kindly said, yes, I've actually got the opportunity to talk about it tomorrow. Don't forget to remember. So, yeah, I, I appreciate everything that you've said here, Joe, but just be in the moment. Don't, don't be too much about trying to work out what's going to happen because we have no, as you said, we have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't even know what's going to happen for the rest of the day. Mm -hmm. if, if I can just, can, can I just give you a, a little thing? Uh, that first passage where you talked about uh, Richard of, and you said Chichester, it's actually Chichester. Chichester, yeah. It's the, I, uh, yeah, it's, Chichester, thank you. No, Chichester, if, if, as in it, right, Chichester. Chichester. Chichester, no emphasis on the Chester, Chichester. Uh, I've been to Chichester many times, I've been to the cathedral, and that prayer that you taught there, we were taught that in school. One of the things that I remember so clearly in that prayer that we were taught at that time was to give and ask for no return. That has stayed with me all my life. Mm. It is such a blessing. So thank you for reminding me of Richard of Chichester. How do you say it, How do you say it again one more time? Chichester. It's Chichester. The, the emphasis is on the chi, as in chick. Got it. Ch <laughs> Chichester. Yeah, Chichester. Got it. Kind right. of the chit, you, yeah, forget the CH. Just go right to That's right. Chichester. Chichester. Right. Yeah. If it was chai, it would be IE, but there's no E there. Chit. Yeah. I Sorry. just. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much, Mike. Uh, you know, Joe, thank you for this. And this kind of brings me back to some of my favorite passages, because when I think of knowing him more clearly, uh, there's a part of me that, you know, for so many men, I think especially, um, one of the things that keeps men from sometimes coming to the Lord is they think once they get him all figured out, then they can come. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a bad premise to begin with that we mm -hmm. can fully know him. We can know him more clearly and we should. In fact, my prayer each day is Lord, help me to know you more and help mm -hmm. me to know you very, very well. Uh, but I, I love passages, and I've shared this with guys before. I know I love passages like Psalm 145, 3, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. I love words like that in the scripture. It's unsearchable. I don't know, I don't know who preached the message, but I, I wrote this in my notes next to that verse. When we cannot, by searching, find the bottom we must simply sit at the edge and enjoy the depths. And that's the unsearchableness of our God. Two chapters over, he says, he determines the number of the stars and he gives to all of them their names. Great is the Lord and abundant in power and his understanding is beyond measure. Mm -hmm. So he's immeasurable. Mm -hmm. But the more we get to know him, the more that blows us away that he is a God who is beyond our imagination. Mm -hmm. And, and in a sense, that is us getting to know him more clearly. We are beginning to know that he is, he's, he's so far beyond what we can ever contemplate that it just magnifies his greatness uh, before us. And so you've helped me think about in those terms again today. 
and that's uh, that's always a good thought. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, thanks, Craig. It's a day by day journey, guys. I mean, it's uh, you know his word. His word will lead us. His word will guide us. And I encourage you to do what Joe said, just to simply live in that moment, live in that in, in his presence, and uh, and 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 don't get don't get too far ahead, because if you're getting too far ahead, guess what? You probably left him in the dust, and uh, he wants to be right by your side. He wants to be walking with you, uh, giving you insight, giving you wisdom, giving you peace, giving you direction. You know, he doesn't want to lead you astray. He just says, "Walk with me day by day." Um, Joe, what a simple, simple prayer, simple outline, but, uh, my prayer is that we won't complicate things and that we will simply be <clears throat> more clearly to love you more dearly, to follow thee more nearly. You additionally, additionally, Rod, if I may, I, I think that the, the joy from that Godspell play, and I've seen it. It started off as an off, off Broadway, then it became off Broadway, then it became Broadway, and then it became, you know, fodder for um, high school and, and college plays. I mean, it's, this, is, this play has been done many, many, many times. And what I really like about that, especially, um, you know, as she's doing the one, two, three, and Jesus, you know, the man who's playing Jesus in this caricature, he kind of goes one, two, three, and kind of connects with her. And then I just love the joy. Mm. I love the playfulness. I love the freedom. And if I'm not careful, I get so serious minded about all this that I forget that he gives us joy. You know, his joy is, is new. His grace is new. His you know, he wants us, like Mike pointed out, he wants us to enjoy the moments. He wants us to enjoy the rain and the, the green uh, grass and the trees and the flowers. He wants us to enjoy life. And if we're not careful, at least if I'm not careful, I get so serious minded that I just forget to enjoy the little things in life. And my wife, Rod, as you know, had a, like a 10 year head start on me on this faith journey. My wife is so playful. She is so good at just taking things not so seriously. But as I think most Mike said, there's a season for everything. There's a season to be joyful. There's a season to be sorrowful. There's a season to be very serious minded. And then there's a season uh, not to be so serious minded, if, if that makes sense, Rod. And I, I pray that God would broaden the, uh, the scope of our experience with life and that as Solomon wrote that we could uh, experience life more fully. And, and that's John 10.10. 10. You know, God came to give us life and life more abundantly. Amen. You know, you mentioned uh, Joe Jerry Kirk and what a, you know, he actually exudes what you talked about today. He is a joyful man. And I think he really, one of the things that makes him joyful is he is living in the moment. I mean, and, I, and to be quite honest, I miss the birds. I've heard Jerry share that illustration for that birds get him so excited because he guess what he's he's not missing them going by and we miss so much my wife calls them god winks that's what she calls you know god's winking at me and she doesn't want to miss a god wink but we get so so out there so busy so consumed uh that we miss and, and we miss those joy moments that are all around us all the time and so you're right, Joe, and, and, and thanks for reminding me of Jerry. You know, one of the things that's so contagious about him is he laughs at his own stuff. You know, he, <laughs> he just start, he just start, he cry, and you start laughing because he's laughing. I mean, you, know, you know what I'm talking about. He is, he is a joyful man of God, and Jerry must be, what, in his 90s now probably? I think he's 89, going on 90. He just told me the other day, counting kids, grandkids, and great-grandkids, there, with all the kids that are being the pregnant mothers now, he's soon going to have a hundred people in his downline. He has multiplied, and he's smiling about every one of them, isn't he? Of Absolutely. course, Absolutely. Yeah. that's good. Hey, any other insights, guys, or any other observations before we say goodbye this morning? 
I'd like to say thanks, Joe. I appreciate the focus and the direction that you've given us and the edification. I also want to say thanks for reminding me of my senior year in 1973 with those clothes. I never dressed like that <laughs> and I didn't wear all the makeup, but I very much remember that song and, and the uh, production that it was in. Uh, it re made me reflect on the spiral that my Christian growth has been to where sometimes I'm real, I feel really close to him and then I'll drift like an ellipse and get a little further away from the sun and then come back. And uh, I think the spiral's getting tighter. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. Thanks Thank you for very that. much. Thanks for that encouragement, Byron. God bless you in this journey. I bet you were looking pretty sharp though in 73. I bet you, you, you had a little strut going too, didn't you? <laughs> you had that big Afro. My wife had the Afro too. It was almost yeah. shoulder width. Oh, cool. It looked like a mushroom when I pulled my motorcycle helmet off. <laughs> I asked Chris what he thought about the video. Thanks, Chris, for your support in this. He said, it's old. <laughs> that video is old, he said. I said, you probably weren't even born yet. He goes, no, I was not born yet when they made that video. Well, once again, thank you for being part, Joe. Thank you.